Hey guys, how are we all doing? So, this is deck number one of two uh, brought in to me today, which is Monday. This video will be uploaded Tuesday, not that it makes any difference, but deck one of two. Both of these have been dropped off to me today by a really nice customer in his other half, uh, Stuart. They've come in to me for a service, uh, cables, and also to have a very nasty speed issue repaired. Now, while the customer was here, I briefly looked inside the deck to show them just to see if it's the components that I feel are causing the issue. Now, no, this isn't always the case. This isn't just the holy grail of fixes. But if your turntable does this, turn it on, no strobe. But your 33 and 45, you might not be able to pick that up properly on here. But those both of these LEDs are actually staying on. You can push the buttons down, but you have no physical changeover of the speed. You cannot start or stop the deck. It just keeps going. Turn the turntable off. Okay, it's got a runaway speed error. Very, very common issue. There are multiple things that can cause this, but one thing you should be checking, and I'm gonna show you this in just a second. Now, I can't stress this enough. If you are not experienced with electronics, you're not very good at doing this, don't touch it, okay? But this is where it's safe to do so. Unplug the UK plug or wherever you are. Unplug the turntable, disconnect it from the wall. Leave it for a little while, okay? And what we're going to do is one component on this board that we need to check first of all. This is the first thing we check. You see this component right here? It's a transistor. It's called a Q201 on the board. That's where it says 201, Q201. If there's movement like this, an up and down movement, it's pretty obvious. It's like a wobbly tooth. So it's not connecting. The connection underneath is not connecting where it should be. And as you can also see, there's a brown spot around here too. It's quite apparent when you look at it. It's going to be a heat related issue. So I'm going to need to change. I mean, this component's being changed anyway. I'll have to check all the rest of these on here as well. But on this occasion, it's pretty apparent that this is causing the issue. So if you've got break in the board, i.e. crack solder, so you can have your speakers on one minute, the vibration's going through your desk, it's vibrating the turntable, you know, it doesn't take much to move it back to hit the connection and off the connection again. That's why these are intermittent. This turntable, if I quickly zoom back out again, this turntable, the issues that were reported, it was intermittent. So one minute he turn this on and it will do it. The next minute he turns it back on again, it doesn't do it. Um, so he's been putting up this for quite a while now. Both of his decks do exactly the same thing. Now he bought these from a friend. I know the background from what he's told me is pretty genuine. These haven't been tampered with. There are no parts that have been changed on this board at all. Normally I'd say to people, if you bought them secondhand, there's a high chance that maybe someone's attempted to have, they've had this problem before. They've tried to fix this and they've obviously broken parts on the board. Now if you give me just a second, I'll show you what I mean. Um, Here we go, right, so what tends to happen, just to give you an example of this, if you look at this board here, so this is another board with the state assembly, everything all removed. If you look very carefully, you see here, if I zoom this in with my camera again, you see the state of this? So as you can see, this guy's obviously blown the, this is the guy that blew the power with his um, pop-up. The guy had attempted to replace the power components. He's done an absolute shambles of this. And as you can see, the actual heat pad now is gone. There is no heat pad. And he also put the components on the wrong way around. We've got the similar thing here with the drive chip assembly layout for the heat pads. But the back of Q201 that you can see here, the component is actually still on the board. So this is the, this is the component that I'm trying to tell you about on here now. So if we look here and then look here, this is the same layout and exactly the same component. If you turn this the other way around, this is what it looks like. You have the three connecting points here for the transistor. If you have movement, which obviously this doesn't, this has been reflowed. Actually, no, it hasn't, sorry. This is just standard, but it is in good condition. It's not moving, it's firm. So if I try and move this, it's not moving, as you can see, really. There's minimal movement there, whereas this one here, when I move it, it's quite apparent. So if you've got dry solder points and cracked solder, these connections here will keep moving and don't touch properly, and it will lead to problems. That's the long and the short of it. So what we're gonna do now very quickly, if I just turn this turntable on again, so you can see LED is still not lit. 
If I move the component in a certain way, there we go. Put the platter back on again. We've got a working turntable. So, as you can see, a simple break in the board on a component that costs next to nothing can cause this problem. Now, not saying that there's no other issues on the board, because if I take this off again, take this back off and show you the comparison between the two boards on this, if you look, like I say, it's quite apparent with the heat on that particular corner here, if you then look at the difference between these boards, you'll see that there isn't actually, it's quite hard to, to show you on this, but it is apparent, the difference by the way that they look. This one's fine. This one here is not. So you need to be very, very careful. And again, like I say, the reason for this video is just to get people to check it. It's a simple thing to do. Make sure you do not have the power turned on at all. Make sure there is no power. Make sure that this is physically disconnected from the wall. I can do this as this is grounded, but make sure you have the power removed from the wall. Do not touch any components. But like I say, that component you need to check. If you give this to somebody and they're dishonest, they can turn around and say to you that this, that and the other needs replacing, baffle you with science when actually all it required was either a replacement transistor or re-soldering re back onto the board. Having the old solder removed, having it reflowed, and having fresh solder popped into place and that will solve your problem. Now there may be other issues along the line around this section of the board as well that I need to check over but that issue there is the main cause, root cause of that problem. So as you can see now look, no power, there we go. It's intermittent because of that. So, like I say, if you want to check this before giving this to somebody, unplug it from the wall, leave it for a little while. I'm not going to be held responsible for any damage, but it's just something that you can check to save yourself quite a lot of money with people that don't know what they're doing or people that want to rip you off. So, unplug it from the wall, check that component. Okay. If you move that component and it is extremely loose and you are good with soldering, okay, then you can remove this unit. You can remove the main board. You've got the three longer bolts here, the screws that hold the board on, disconnect the wiring harnesses, flip the board the other way around. If you're careful, you can reflow the solder. Pop it back down again, you sorted the issue. And that way you don't need to have anything else completed as long as that is okay, all right? Now we're not saying there's other issues, but it's just a bit of helpful advice. Normally I don't really do DIY videos or give people advice into this because you never know who's watching these videos. But on this occasion, look, this is a simple thing that should be checked and anybody that is, you know, in the understanding of electronics will know what to check. But this is just to stop the viewers who are watching this video who have an issue like this from being basically ripped off, which is what my intentions with my videos are, to stop people from spending money when it is not needed. What would you rather do, spend hundreds of pounds in labour, you know, on parts that aren't required, or check to see if that's the problem, and when you give this turntable or your decks to someone, go, oh yeah, I booked him for a service, and just to let you know, I've just checked that component, it's extremely loose, that may be causing the issue, okay? And if you physically move it and know that is, the other thing you can do, okay, is get... Like I say, plug it in, take it apart, plug it in, do what I've done. Move the component to see if the light will change and you have got speed. And you know part of the issue will be caused due to that transistor not having the flow of solder connecting the points. Okay, so again, can't be held responsible with any of this. It's just a bit of helpful advice. I don't want people getting ripped off. And if you genuinely are not sure on how to do this, um, are not too savvy with electronics and you don't want to touch things like this leave it to someone that can not everybody out there is is as bad as i say okay just be very careful but i thought i'd just give you that little bit of advice um you know because it can help you from spending hundreds or pence all right guys cheers for watching i'll speak to you all soon